I know what you're thinking, and yes, I am wearing this outfit because my mom says it makes me look like Audrey Hepburn. Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter, and today I'm here with a video that I've been putting off filming for quite a while. So in 2020, I actually made a video called Selling My Typewriters. I had the goal of selling a few typewriters for my collection. I wanted to go to an auction and I wanted to go to an estate sale. Those were just some ways that I thought that I could really expand my typewriter collection and also make it a little bit more sustainable. I did hit that goal and I sold two typewriters from my collection at the time, a 1940 Super Speed and an Olivetti Linea 98, which came back. And then in 2021, I went to a few estate sales or 15. So now here I am in 2022 and I'm looking at my collection and it's just becoming a bit overwhelming. I love typewriters. I love testing new typewriters. Every time I see one that's under $25, I buy it. Even if it's in terrible condition, I just really love finding typewriters. I love the hunt. Go to lots of antique stores. These are things you know. But in order to make my collection did you make it? Someone had to jump on a chair so she could watch me better. In order to make my collection a little bit more sustainable, I also have to make considerations about what typewriters am I going to keep? Because I do not have space for all of the typewriters that I see out there in the wild or fix. And so that led me to selling a few of my typewriters. So in 2021, I actually went through the process of selling about 10 typewriters. You heard me right, I sold 10 typewriters in 2021. And here's a little bit of that journey. So it was September, I was looking at my collection and I was completely overwhelmed. I had too many machines, I had a lot on the repair table, I had machines that I was still looking for and ones I wanted to get and I was starting to go to estate sales which became a problem and I just had too many. So I got this random Facebook request as I was scrolling through some of my local sale groups for a local craft show that was gonna be happening in November. And I said, oh, that might be a really great way to sell quite a few typewriters all at once. So I actually emailed the coordinators and said, hey, I don't make crafts, but I do restore antique and old typewriters. Would this be something you'd be willing to have at your craft show? They emailed me back. They wanted to see a few samples of my work and they said, we think that'd be really interesting. So in November, I actually went to a craft show, went with seven typewriters and tried to sell a few to the local public. In addition to trying to sell typewriters at that craft show, I also went through the process of starting to list those same typewriters on Facebook Marketplace. These were machines that I wasn't super attached to, ones that I had already filmed videos with and didn't necessarily want to keep in my collection forever, doubles that I might have had of things, things that I had just fixed on the repair table and no longer wanted to look at. They were just machines that were no longer a really sole part of my collection and things that I needed to keep forever. So a little bit before that craft show, I actually went through the process of posting a few typewriters on Facebook Marketplace, including an Underwood Champion from the 1930s. This typewriter was actually featured in my typewriter feet video. I purchased this typewriter for $25 to $30 at a flea market. I went through the process of repairing it, but it just wasn't my favorite typewriter in the world. And I'd had an Underwood Universal before that that I really did like as well, and I had sold that to a friend. So this was my second one in that body style. And after using it, I just thought that there were other machines that I liked better. So I decided to list that typewriter to kind of test the waters. And what happened was I got a ton of responses immediately after posting that listing. So I posted that listing for about $50 on Facebook Marketplace and I cross posted it in some sale groups. My thought was if it doesn't sell before the craft show, I'll just take it with me to the craft show and put it on the table. I had a few others listed at the same time and I got dozens and dozens and dozens of messages from people. A lot of them were other typewriter collectors who saw me post that and were asking if I would do shipping, which I wasn't going to. Um, I had a few people from Pittsburgh, which is about two hours away, also message me and said, well, if you're ever in this area, I'll buy it from you. And then I had a few people message me from my local area. And one of those people was a really sweet lady um, who said, asked me if I would take $45 for the typewriter and that she wanted to purchase that typewriter for her grandson for a Christmas present so he could learn how to spell on a typewriter. So he wasn't learning how to spell in a word processor where they auto-correct you so you could learn how to spell his name. And I thought that was the sweetest story. So of course I sold that Underwood to her. Okay, little guy, we're off to sell you. Take you to a new home. Wow, that's a look. Just uh, don't look at my hair and we'll be fine. 
Uh, so last night, it was Sunday night, and I actually decided to post a few of my typewriters that I'm just not that into that have been repaired and are ready to go into their next homes. And within an hour, I actually had three messages on this black Underwood Champion typewriter from people all over the place that actually wanted to buy it from me. And I arranged with someone to pick it up this morning at like 10 o'clock in the morning in the parking lot of a Dunkin' Donuts, which is why I said yes to this one, because I'd like to go to Dunkin' Donuts right now. I felt so good after selling that machine. It was something that I had purchased. I had fixed and loved on a little. I got to use it in a video. I got to play around with it and kind of figure out if it was for me. And then I got to sell it to somebody as their first typewriter. A little nine-year-old is gonna be working on a spelling on that typewriter. I felt really good about that process. And it kind of encouraged me to look a little bit more critically at some of the other machines in my collection. And then I had that craft show that I was going to. And I ended up taking seven typewriters with me. How many typewriters can you fit in one car? Let's find out, shall we? Well, it's the day of the sale and I've got <laughs> typewriters over here, typewriters in the back seat. Um, I'm leaving with seven and two toys and a couple other things and I'm hoping to come back with zero. But I'm not very, uh, I'm not betting my life on it. I'm not betting the rest of my collection on it. But if I sell two, I would cover the cost of like every typewriter there. So that would be nice. Hopefully, we'll see. I don't know. Of course I parked as far away as humanly possible. So I'm gonna try to move my car because I carry the most heavy things. They saw I was struggling and gave me a cart. <laughs> I took my blue Olympia SM7. I took a Royal Quiet Deluxe. I took my yellow Smith Corona Classic 12. Kind of regret getting rid of that one, but I took that one with me. I took my Sears Celebrity Power Electric 12, which was actually my first typewriter and an electric typewriter. I also took Orso, this Olivetti Linea 98, and if you want to see a little bit more about him and how I sold him and then he came back and his history, I'll link that video down below. I also took a Smith Corona Sterling from the 1960s, which was one of my estate sale finds. I really liked that typewriter, but I took it with me. I also took my Royal Sabre, my green wood panel typewriter. I did a full video on that. I'll link that down below as well. And Oh, I also took a few of my toy typewriters. Typewriters that I had done videos on before but just wasn't super sure I wanted to keep forever. So I took all these machines to this art festival. I had all of them listed for about $50, except for my Olympia SM7, I listed that as 70, just because that was a little bit of a weirder branded typewriter for our area. And I picked all of these machines specifically because I had tried them, I had used them, and I felt comfortable enough that they weren't something I really needed to keep forever. They didn't have any sentimental value to me particularly, and I knew that I'd be okay if they went and went to a new home. So I set up this whole table and I sat in this room next to a few other art vendors and people just passed me by all day. People were not interested in purchasing a typewriter. In fact, the majority audience of this craft festival were older women and older women would pass the table and chuckle that there were typewriters on the table and would tell me that they got rid of their typewriters and they were so glad that they didn't have to use another one. And I completely understand and I think going back to that event probably wasn't the right audience for my collection of typewriters. However, I had a ton of kids come up to the table and try out some of the typewriters on the front. The Galaxy 12 got a ton of usage from kids. They were fascinated by it. Anytime a kid entered the room, I like ushered them over and I said, hey, have you ever used a typewriter before? And a lot of them were like, I don't even know what a typewriter is. And here I am with a table of seven of them. And I had a few of them try the typewriters on the table. They were really interested in them, but nobody was really biting. And then, the unthinkable happened. So this couple walked into the room, they saw that I had a table full of typewriters and just to be polite, they came over and tried a few. And the man from the couple actually started testing some of the machines out and like a light bulb went off in his head and he said, oh, this would be really cool to use at the courthouse 
to type out marriage licenses because typically now they're just printed out and they used to be done on typewriters. How special would it be if when you went to get your marriage license done, it would be hand typed? I never thought of that, but apparently this guy worked in that department of the courthouse. So he wanted to test all the machines on the table to see which would be the best for that kind of usage. So he went through and he tested all the machines on the table. Each one of them got a little type sample. I had paper in all of them, so he tried them all out. And then he said, I'm gonna walk around and think about it and then I'll come back. And when he came back, he asked if he could try the electric typewriter. Now I had Jan, my Sears Celebrity Power 12, on the floor on her case with her cord hanging out because I figured that nobody would want to try an electric typewriter. Like what's worse than a manual typewriter? An electric one from the 1970s. But instead, he said, I want to try that one out. I plugged it in and he tried it on the floor and he said, that's the one. That would be really easy to use and integrate into the courthouse to use for marriage licenses. And I also had it listed for a little bit lower. I had about $45 listed on that one. And he bought it. And I was so excited and slightly confused why the electric typewriter that had kind of a wonky paint job on it, and I'll list that video down below as well, that was the one that he wanted. But I was so excited that that machine was going to this really interesting place where it would be used consistently, not set up on a shelf somewhere, and that it would have this really unique purpose. It was just a win-win and I was so stoked. All the other vendors in the room who had seen people just walk by me all day started cheering for me and I did a little like dance because I'm strange and I just got really excited that I had sold that typewriter and that was in the last 45 minutes of the show and it was about a four hour show. Then, as I was packing up, some of the other vendors in the place were walking around. I had met a few of the other vendors and they came and talked to me and they were really nice. And one of the vendors from upstairs at this event came down and said, hey, would you be willing to sell me one of these typewriters at a lower price for cash? Because I have a nine year old nephew and we've been looking to get a typewriter for him. And I was like, absolutely. If I don't have to carry it back to my car, you've got it. And so she asked me, well, which one of these typewriters on this table would be the best for a nine-year-old? And as a collector, I had to run through, okay, what are the things that would be important for a younger person using this machine to be able to have? You want something that has really easy action on it because they are not gonna have the finger strength to really wail on the machine. I was also thinking about portability, something that they could put away in the case and put under their bed and pull out when they really wanted to try their typewriter, something that they could easily pack away and travel with. And so I gave her the two best options on the table for that specifically. And I said, okay, well, here is this Royal Quiet Deluxe from the 1950s, pretty classic machine, not the world's greatest typers in my personal opinion, but it has a nice portable case to it, pretty classic looking typewriter. And then I also gave her the option of the Smith Corona Sterling from the 1960s. And she tried that machine out and she said that she liked that one a little bit better. So I sold it to her for about $40. And that was in the last five minutes of this sale. I was just so stoked that I sold two of the typewriters out of the seven that I brought with me. And they both were going to really interesting places. I liked that the one typewriter was going to some place where it would be used and adored by a lot of people because who's gonna have a marriage license now that that typewriter actually filled out. I thought that was so cool. And then also the fact that one of those machines was going to someone for Christmas and they were nine years old. And oh my gosh, you will never forget the day that you got a typewriter for Christmas. The next thing I did was I listed my toy typewriter on eBay and then I listed the rest of the typewriters that I was ready to sell on Facebook Marketplace. Now I use Facebook Marketplace for a couple of reasons. I really like that it's all local pickup. Now you can ship through Facebook Marketplace. I never click that option for a couple of reasons. I don't like the idea of shipping a typewriter. I've seen way too many horror stories on the Facebook collectors groups of people getting a typewriter that's been damaged in shipping. I've had pretty okay luck with it, but it's just not something that I'm willing to do for a machine that I really wanna guarantee it's gonna work when you get it. So I listed them all for local pickup in my area. And then the machine that I did list on eBay was a toy typewriter that came complete in its box and in a case. And I knew that I could pad the box really well and just protect it while it was being shipped. And I also knew that I had received that typewriter in shipping for a pretty low rate. And I thought that that would probably be okay. I did end up selling that typewriter. So it was listed on eBay for a couple of weeks. And then finally somebody actually bid on it. I only had one bidder and they got it for a really good rate, but good for them. I sent it to them and that process was super simple. I've literally never sold anything on eBay before. So I was a little bit nervous 
service because they have you print out a shipping label and you prepay for shipping ahead of time and I'm hoping that it covers it because I realize now I didn't measure the box I was shipping the typewriter in, I only measured the typewriter box so probably gonna have to pay some extra for shipping but lesson learned on that one. So I'm gonna go into my favorite post office which is inside of a pharmacy and we're gonna go ship this guy out and hopefully it makes it to its new owner in time and in nice condition and I'm a little bit nervous about shipping stuff. Okay, that was the easiest thing in the world. They just scan it and then you can leave. Why don't all shipping, that was so much easier than having to do any other kind of shipping. Highly recommend that, but I hope it actually worked. So I got rid of my toy typewriter, which doesn't count toward my 10, so technically I sold 11. But I was really excited for that one to go, and it was my first eBay shipping experience. Then I started posting the typewriters I had left on my Facebook Marketplace account, and I started to get a few bites. I cross-posted them in some local sale groups, and that's where people kind of saw them from the local area, and it would pop up on their feed and they would go, Oh, that'd be a great Christmas present. Now this was in November of 2021, so people are thinking about Christmas presents. It's hard to get things in shipping on time because of the supply chain issues that were happening at the time. And also, it's a really unique Christmas gift. It was a little bit more popular for some reason. And so I got bids on a few of my typewriters. The first one to actually get a ton of attention was that green Royal Sabre with the fake wood paneling from the 1970s. I actually got two messages right away on that machine. Wow, I look nuts. Um, <laughs> so last night I was just minding my own business watching YouTube because that's what I do every night. And I got a message from somebody about my Royal Sabre, which I had listed on Facebook Marketplace. This was a local person. They said they Googled typewriter, ran into one of my videos, realized that I was local, and then they saw my last name on the Facebook Marketplace posting and realized that they worked with my sister all summer. So this is actually somebody who knows me, and she messaged me about the typewriter and said, hey, I'm interested in this, and then she saw that I had four other ones posted, and she's like, oh, but I also kind of really like that blue one, which is my Olympia SM7. So I was like, well, I'll bring a couple and you can try them all out, and that way you can get like the feel for which one you like best, and you can test them and it'll be fine. Then. I kid you not, an hour later, somebody else messaged me about that same green Royal Sabre and they're 45 minutes away and they were only interested in that green machine and I didn't know what to do. The other girl wasn't responding to me and this lady from further away really wanted that Royal Sabre. So I went ahead and made a deal with the lady who was further away for that Royal Sabre because the local girl wanted to test a few and she was also like really interested in the blue one. So I figured it was okay, couldn't get a hold of her for a little bit. And I felt so horrible about the situation because I don't want her to feel like I'm a scammer or like bait and switching typewriters. They just genuinely, sometimes when you post something on Facebook Marketplace, it'll sit for weeks and weeks and weeks and then you'll get one message on it and suddenly everybody and their uncle wants that same machine. So I think Facebook probably has an algorithm where if you get attention on a post, it starts promoting it over and over and over again and it gets higher up on the Facebook marketplace. So, but the good news is that the local girl's gonna try a couple and I'm bringing a machine that I haven't listed on Facebook marketplace yet for her to try so that she doesn't feel like she missed out on one because I want her to have like the best options possible and get the best machine for her. I want her to really try them. And then tomorrow morning, I'm driving 45 minutes in the middle of the morning to go drop off the green typewriter. So hopefully I'll be selling two typewriters in two days and that will justify me buying more. So I ended up selling the green typewriter at the time to that woman in State College and what I ended up doing instead was then messaging that friend of my sister's and saying, hey, the green one just sold, somebody really wanted that one, but I still have a ton for you to test and I'll bring some extras so you can try them out. So I spread out all of these typewriters. I took maybe four or five with me. I spread them out over these tables in the Sheets parking lot and I stuck paper in all of them and then I had her try a bunch of the typewriters to see which feel she liked the best. And when she started, she was like, ah, I don't really know, are they gonna feel different? And then she tried the first two and she said, wow, these feel so incredibly different. You're right, I'm glad I'm testing these. She wanted something that she could type on and also use cardstock every once in a while in. So I took with me the Galaxy 12 in yellow. I took with me the Royal Quiet Deluxe from the 1950s. I took the Olympia SM7 with me in that bright blue color because she liked the color of it. And then I also took with me the Underwood Golden Touch Deluxe. I took Midas, which is my $5 typewriter with me. I had just fixed it and I hadn't done testing yet on it to see if that was the one I wanted to keep out of the two 
but I had like an emotional attachment to Marigold, so I thought I'd just take that one with me just in case she wanted that one instead. So she sat down and she tried all these typewriters, and after the process of elimination, she decided the best typewriter out of there for her purposes was actually that Smith Corona Galaxy 12 from the 1970s. And I was so excited that that machine was getting a home, and it was somebody that I knew and somebody who was really going to love that typewriter. However, I had a blue ribbon in that typewriter that I'd gotten off of eBay, and she really wanted a bicolor typewriter ribbon. She wanted one with red, and as I looked at all the typewriters I had out there, none of them had the red ribbon on it. I told her where to get it on Amazon, but I went ahead and swapped the ribbon replacement I had on my Golden Touch, which was black and brown, and I put that on the Galaxy 12 for her, showed her how to change out that ribbon so that when she got a red ribbon, she could put that in there and use that in her typewriter. And she was so happy to get that typewriter brighter and I was really happy that it went to a good home and then I had to pack the rest of them into my car. Me doing an emergency ribbon change in the middle of a parking lot and realizing I have nothing to take the ink off my fingers. So then the morning came of the day that I should be selling Ferdinand, my royal saber from the 1960s, 1970s, and then something happened. So much drama. Not really. So I had listed that green typewriter that one lady wanted it and I was going to drive it out to her house at 530 in the morning. She canceled on me and then like stopped messaging me completely. So I felt horrible that that machine wasn't there for that girl to test, but I know that she ended up with the right typewriter in the end. It's fine. And then I posted another typewriter today, my golden touch because I have two of them, so I listed one of them today. And the woman who wanted the green typewriter now wants the gold one instead. So Weather permitting, I'm gonna drive it out there tomorrow as long as she doesn't text me at 5.30 in the morning to cancel um, and leave it on our front porch. So we'll see how that one goes. I'm trying not to get my hopes up about it, but hopefully we'll get a typewriter to a new home because that's the whole goal. I had to do a bit of thinking on this one. I wanted to really make sure that I was okay selling this machine, especially if I had to drive an hour and the seller had, or this buyer had already canceled on me once before, but I thought about it and she told me that this was gonna be a Christmas present for her little girl Christmas morning. How cool would it be to open up a golden typewriter? So I let that really kind of guide me in making this decision. And I said, absolutely, I'll drop it off tomorrow morning. When we had negotiated the price of this machine, I'd actually said, okay, I'll take $50 for it. And she messaged me the next day and said, um, I can't go to the bank and I only have 60 because I have 20s. Could you bring a 10 as change? I said, no problem. And then I sat down and made a video of how to use this typewriter. I wasn't sure if she had used a typewriter in a while. The case latching mechanism on this machine was just a little bit confusing. So I made a quick tutorial for her and sent it to her so that she could show that to her daughter and her daughter could learn how to use that typewriter by watching my video. And after sending that video to me, she said, you know what, keep that extra $10 for gas money since I was driving and dropping it off on her porch. And it kind of patched over the weird feelings I had about selling that typewriter to that specific buyer. So I actually had a driver for this one. My dad drove me out there and I did the porch drop off. And I was very happy actually after dropping off this machine. I knew I made the right decision because I kept thinking about that little girl opening that typewriter on Christmas morning and getting to use it and try it out. And I knew that that was the right home for my typewriter. So at this point, I still had a few typewriters listed on Facebook Marketplace, and I went a little while between getting bites on them. And then I actually had a message from another collector in the typewriter community who saw my Olympia SM7. And actually, you can check him out on the typewriter database. His username is iHeartSerifs. And he messaged me and said, hey, I would like that Olympia SM7, but I'm only driving through that area. And I don't drive through your specific area. I drive through the other side of the state. So he and I actually coordinated a time where I could go visit my sister on the other side of the state and do a drop off of that typewriter as he was driving through that area. So I ended up selling that typewriter for about $70 to that other collector while I was visiting my sister. And um, I'll actually include the video I made while I was there. I did like a cool thrift trip and I met him in her driveway. We put the typewriter on top of her trash can and he did a double check testing of it. He asked me why I was getting rid of that machine. And to be fair, it was in great condition. It was a beautiful typewriter and kind of rare for my area. I just didn't like typing on it. And I knew almost instantly after getting that typewriter and testing it, I did not enjoy typing on that typewriter, which is why I decided to sell it. And I was really excited that it was going to another collector and he loved it. So I was so glad that that typewriter was going home.
After scheduling that with him later in December, I still had a few other typewriters that were getting some attention on Facebook Marketplace. At this point, I still had my Royal Quiet Deluxe listed, and I still had the Royal Saber listed. I had to relist it after it didn't sell through the first time. And I got a message on the Royal Quiet Deluxe. And this woman was like, hey, I'd really like to get this machine. I'd happily meet you at this time in the church parking lot. So I went out to meet her. There she is. She's going to a new home. Last time you'll ever be in this car, Diana. Woohoo! I'm in a church parking lot getting ready to sell another typewriter. So this time I'm selling my Royal Quiet Deluxe. I have a little bit of hesitancy about selling it because it was gifted to me by someone, but I know it's going to be better used by somebody who only has one typewriter. So I've done all I can to it. I've cleaned it up. I've got it working and I know that it's going to a better place because it'll actually be used. So now I'm just sitting here waiting for someone to come and pick it up and then I'll be one typewriter less richer poorer i'll be one typewriter poorer i'm not sure how that works but it means i have room for more now you can see here that i had a little bit of hesitation in selling this typewriter and there's a few reasons for that this was actually gifted to me by an ex-boyfriend's grandma i don't want to get into it but i just had always felt weird about this machine and i didn't like typing on it very much but i kept it for a really long time because of that connection to it and as I was going through my collection, I really had to sit down and think, man, I really hate this body design of this typewriter. I've talked about how much I hate this kind of typewriter. I never use it. And it would probably be better if it belonged to somebody else who's gonna use this typewriter. So I felt weird about selling it until I actually met the woman buying that machine. I feel so much better. So it went to a woman who bought it for her father-in-law and he recently had a series of strokes and they thought that maybe he could work on his dexterity and his hands by using a typewriter. It makes my heart so happy to know that it's going to be used and appreciated by someone who's really going to love it. And that's why I do this and why I fix them. So it just makes me so much happier and I feel so much better about where it's going and that it's going to be used properly. And it's somebody's Christmas present this year, so that is so awesome and that just makes it all worth it. So almost all of my typewriters have homes. It's becoming the beginning of December in 2021 and I have only one typewriter, one portable left listed on Facebook Marketplace. I also had this one listed on Facebook Marketplace, but nobody was really interested in them and that's okay, you can stay here forever. And that would be the Royal Saber. A couple things happened. First of all, I got a text from somebody who said, hey, I'd like to get that typewriter, but let me call you, give me your number, let me call you when I'm ready to pick it up. I gave him my number, two weeks went by, he never called me about that typewriter. So I kind of chalked that one up to being like, okay, he's not interested. Then I had a woman message me and say that she would like that typewriter, but she'd like to ask her husband first. And then I had a third person message me and say, I'll buy it, here's the time, date, tomorrow, no problem. So this was the second time that this had happened with this green typewriter. I had a couple people message me about it and a couple people just kind of bail on it, but it did eventually get to go to a new home and I sold it to somebody who again was giving it to their daughter for Christmas. I, I was so happy that so many of my typewriters are gonna be under people's Christmas trees that year. All right, Ferdinand, you're going home. Today is the day. Okay, so it's five o'clock, it's very dark. Yes, I'm still wearing sweatshirts and Hopefully, we're gonna get this guy at home. He's gonna go to somebody for Christmas and he will be out of my car. He's been in my car for a week. That woman who decided that she wanted the green typewriter and then had to talk to her husband about it was really bummed that she missed out on that typewriter. She wanted to give one to her daughter who was getting married next year and wanted to do all of her invitations on typewriters. And so I came up with a compromise. I said, I might have a couple typewriters on my table that I'm working on, that I'm fixing. Let me see if I can get one done in time for you. At that time, I had just been put in the newspaper locally. That was about December 4th. And I had had a few contacts of people calling me and saying, hey, I have a typewriter, do you wanna buy it? I actually bought a 1950s Smith Corona Clipper from the local piano tuner's wife. I bought that machine for about $20. And I said, you know what? I can clean this machine up. I have a few other similar body design machines. Why don't I go ahead and let this one go? This solves that woman's Christmas problem. It helps me find a new home for this typewriter. And I'm not emotionally attached to this machine. So I picked it up on a Monday and I sold it 
on a Thursday and I dropped it off in a TJ Maxx parking lot to this woman and I was happy that it was going to someone's home. It was a pretty easy deal but I had to film a video in between those two. So that video about I was in the newspaper I filmed <laughs> between Monday getting the machine and Thursday selling that machine. Another day, another typewriter sale. Here she goes. So I had sold even more typewriters than I had on my table, but that guy from before who wanted my Royal Sabre still had my phone number. And he messaged me about a week and a half before Christmas and said something happened. He was trying to get that typewriter for his granddaughter for Christmas, but then her parents found a different typewriter instead that they wanted to get. And then he said, can I give your phone number to my son? He's got some questions. I was literally sitting in the parking lot trying to sell the Royal Sabre. I was waiting for her to come and pick it up when I got this phone call from the son and he said, look, we bought another typewriter from somebody else and it's broken, it doesn't work, and it's not very clean. I was wondering if you still had any typewriters left that I could buy instead of this one because I really want a working typewriter for my daughter for Christmas. And I said, you know what? Let me get back to you. I'm gonna work all this week on fixing up one of the typewriters I have on my table. And the perfect typewriter for that task was my Royal Aristocrat from the 1950s. I previously sold a Royal Aristocrat, actually in trade for Orso over here. And I had one more on the table that had had a broken platen knob. I had fixed that and it still had a bit of a skipping issue and it would get stuck in the middle every once in a while. And I sat down, I said, I'm gonna, work on this typewriter all week. I'm going to fix it for you because I knew that was the perfect opportunity to sell that machine and never have to mess with it again. So I sat down and with some help from Lucas from Typewriter Chicago, who poor thing keeps getting DMs from me of random videos of typewriter parts and me asking, how do I fix this? He worked with me for about a week over Instagram, just trying to diagnose what problems there were with this machine. I had fixed the platen knob previously. We also found that somebody had modified a little bit of the locking mechanism on this typewriter. And so I had to readjust that. And then we also determined there was a weak spring on the bottom of this machine. I worked on it for a week trying to figure it out. My dad worked on it for a week trying to figure it out. We looked at this machine. I knew if I was gonna try and order a spring, it would take weeks. I have not had good luck trying to order springs on the internet. So I messaged the dad and I said, here's what's gonna happen. I have this machine. It is as good as I can get it without replacing the spring, which I do not have access to before Christmas. Your daughter, she's young, would she mind that if every 20 lines or so, this typewriter gets stuck in the middle, all she has to do is bump the carriage a little bit and it'll move it onto the next space. And he said, I will take that over this machine that doesn't work at all. So I also offered to knock a bit of the price off of the machine. And I met him that next morning and I sold him that typewriter in the parking lot. We negotiated the price down a little bit just because it wasn't in perfect, perfect, pristine working condition. It just had one little issue with it. And then he also traded me the machine that they had bought that wasn't working very well. And that meant that I had a new problem on my table to work with, but it also meant that that girl got a working typewriter for Christmas and she loved it. I was very happy that it went to a new home and that I got rid of that typewriter. Today we sell the last of the typewriters. She's leaving me and I never have to mess with her again. Thank goodness. So I sold that typewriter for about 40 bucks and a trade. He had bought this one and it's completely broken. Um, and he didn't have any use for it, so I offered to give him 10 bucks off of mine and I would trade him for this broken one and hopefully we can figure out how to fix this one or maybe use it for parts or something. But the last of the typewriters is gone for the season. Woohoo! So that was 10 typewriters that I sold in the span of a couple of months. That last sale was like right before Christmas and those were all the typewriters that I decided to go to new homes. Now there's a few things that I have to consider after this experience. First of all, I really enjoyed getting to know all these people and getting to figure out where these typewriters were going to go after I sold them. It made me so happy when I was personally sitting there on Christmas morning opening my presents and I opened up an Adler J3, so excited about, that some of my typewriters for my collection were being opened at that same time by younger people who this was their first typewriter. I thought about how excited they would be to use that machine. I thought about how, yeah, maybe it's not a daily typewriter for them, but it's still something that'll be new for them. And I was really excited by the fact that 
I had 10 typewriters in new homes that were all getting used at that time. Some of the other considerations I have after doing this process. There's a few things. First of all, I now know that if I get a typewriter and I'm not crazy about it, I can list it on Facebook Marketplace. Now it might be seasonal when people are actually interested in buying a typewriter, but I know that I don't mind storing it for a little bit. I can list it locally and make sure that it's going to somebody who's really going to appreciate that machine and I can still sell it. There's a little bit of a demand in my area, at least during the Christmas season to buy a portable typewriter. Not so much a big desk typewriter, but again, it's okay. You can stay. As I was listing these typewriters, the things that really stood out to me comparing my posts to the other typewriter posts that are listed in the local area were two things. First of all, I had really detailed photos and descriptions in all of my posts. I told every single person what year that typewriter was from. I had a new ribbon in all of the machines. And I also had photos of multiple angles of the typewriters, including their case in the photos. I had a front facing photo. I had a typewriter with the case with it, the side, the back, and I listed anything that had happened to that typewriter that I had to fix in the description. Now, just from a personal standpoint, I know that that really helps me make purchasing decisions on typewriters when there are multiple photos and they're high quality photos. And I think it also stands out to buyers as well. When they're scrolling through Facebook Marketplace and there's a bunch of broken looking typewriters listed for hundreds of dollars in my local area and they see my post that has a high quality photo, a description and the exact date and serial number of that typewriter, it stands out as someone who maybe is a little bit more knowledgeable. And I also think that putting a new ribbon on all of these machines helped create less of a barrier to entry on typewriters. The other thing that really made my post stand out as opposed to all the other people selling typewriters locally was my prices. I listed almost every single one of these typewriters at $50. Now that's more than I would personally spend on a typewriter because I'm buying typewriters for under $25 and I'm fixing them. Brand new typewriters or typewriters that are perfectly repaired and restored are worth hundreds of dollars, especially if they're from a professional who's restoring those typewriters. You'll see professionally restored or repainted machines on their actual websites for $150, $200, depends on the seller. None of my machines were going to be worth that much, especially in my local area. I had seen typewriters listed on Facebook Marketplace in my local area for that $100 range sit there for months. Some of those machines have even been on there since I started collecting. And I know that that means that price is too high for my local area because if it was something someone was willing to pay, that machine would be gone. So I sat down and I thought about, well, what can I still make enough money to kind of make this experience worth it for me to pay for the work or repairs I might've done on that machine and still make it desirable to my local area. And I landed on that $50 mark. Most of these machines I got for less than $25 and I made about double what I paid for them on each machine. And I also knew that that gave me a little bit of wiggle room to negotiate if someone was on the fence and still make enough profit to again, make that experience worth it for me. So on a lot of them, I made about a $20 bill, but that was enough for me. And I also knew that I was windling down my collection and that they were going to good places. So those are a few of the things that I learned selling 10 of the typewriters in my collection. And since then I have purchased new typewriters. For me, it was all about making sure I was doing my hobby sustainably. I was not trying to make a ton of money or support myself off of selling those typewriters. I was mainly looking to make more room and get some of those typewriters out there into the hands of people who were actually going to use them. And each person that I sold a typewriter to had a specific story for why they were purchasing that typewriter. They had a specific person in mind for who they were gifting this typewriter to. And it made me feel so much better about where those typewriters were going and what homes they were going to have, because that meant that I got to find this poor little broken typewriter somewhere, fix it, give it a new life and pass it on to the next person. If you're interested in more typewriter content or maybe some of the videos about the typewriters that I recently sold, I'll list all of those down in the description below. And there are more videos on this YouTube channel. I also have an Instagram at just.my.typewriter. I want to thank you all so much for watching today. And I want to remind you that you're just my type writer.